Vlogging in public can be intimidating, which is why I brought a good friend of mine and successful vlogger and YouTuber, Fookmop, to the channel today. Up, brother. What's up, man? Good to have you on the channel. I appreciate you mm -hmm. inviting me. What's going on, guys? My name is Hurley, but I live here in Vietnam. People call me Phuc Mop from the YouTube channel, Phuc Mop Vlog. And today, I'm hopefully going to help you guys feel more comfortable while vlogging in public. So have you ever had a time where you felt uncomfortable when, when you vlogged in public? I mean, I've seen a lot of your videos where, like you said, you are wearing uh, a, dr a dress, a women's dress, and you have a duck walking around. So maybe you feel uncomfortable then? Yeah, I gotta say, if you guys aren't familiar with my channel, the reason I went viral here in Vietnam, I acted like a dumb foreigner who spoke Vietnamese, but didn't know what women's clothes were, such as women's pajamas. So I go to the market, I go and buy the pajamas, I buy a pet chicken, put it on a leash and walk it around town. And I will say, at that point, I did feel a little uncomfortable. But I was there for a purpose. I was there for a reason. I wanted to draw eyes. And from that video, a couple people took pictures, they took videos, I ended up on a lot of major Facebook pages, I got calls from major news networks, and literally like two days later, before I even released the video, this is one of the national news networks in Vietnam. They're saying, Phuc Mop La Ai. Who is this guy with the chicken? I'm on the national news. So from then I realized that sometimes you need to put yourself out there and be a lot unusual. Now as a tip, I'm not telling you guys to go wear women's pajamas or buy a chicken. Can unless if you, you want. want, yeah, okay? unless you want to. You can if you want, I'm not saying it, but uh, <laughs> the point is, if I can do that and feel comfortable, there's no reason that you cannot walk around with a camera doing a normal vlog in a public place such as a park, on the street, in the market, wherever. Just remember you're there for a purpose. You're not there to say, hey everyone, look at me, unless you have a pet chicken. You are there to get your video done and to make an interesting video for your audience. So keep that in mind. And if you're walking around in public anyways, you don't want, it's not supposed to be staged, right? You're exactly. walking around and you want to get those reactions like you said, and even the reactions maybe are people of uh, posting on Instagram or something and then you get publicity from that. So another example, I did a local legend here in Vietnam. It's called a Ninja Lead. The women that wear jackets and skirts and sunglasses and gloves and everything. And I, I wanted to make a legend video about this character. So I go down to a very crowded street one night and as ninjas would do, I practice my, <laughs> my fighting, you know, throwing some punches and kicks. And people ended up taking pictures, taking videos. Next thing you know, I pop up on Instagram and before I even release the video, it's out there. Even doing just a normal vlog, people will recognize you in public, especially when they see you with the camera. They say, I know it's that guy. Mm. So guys, you can actually bring attention to your channel in a good way by vlogging in public. And even if you don't have a lot of subscribers, everyone knows what a vlogger is. Mm -hmm. And so if you're holding a camera, they're like, oh, that person's a vlogger. And at least with me, I always felt awkward vlogging in public because I felt like so many eyes were looking at me. And they are, but it's not a bad thing by no. any means. They're interested, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's like if you were just there with a camera, like making a fool out of yourself, again, I gotta go back to me on that one. But if you were just there for no purpose at all, and people are looking at you like, what's this guy doing with a camera? But some people will ask. They'd be like, hey, what are you doing? Be like, oh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm making a vlog. And they might ask, hey, do you have a card? What's your channel? And I've actually gained a lot of subscribers by doing that because people will come up. Some people want to be in the video. And you start talking to them, and I've met a lot of cool people by jumping in my videos. Mm -hmm. I used to have a YouTube channel back in Orlando, Florida about eight, nine years ago. And I interviewed these two girls about gingers, about redheads, just sitting at a restaurant eating. And they still like and comment on my stuff on Facebook wow. almost 10 years later. And that was me walking up to them with a camera, say, hey, you mind being in an interview? And even though that video actually never came out, the one that they were in never got released, they still follow my stuff today almost 10 years later. Wow. You never know who you're going to meet and what connections you're going to make. And on that topic, something that you do, which I should probably do the same and other vloggers can do the same, is get business cards or YouTube cards with your channel name on it. So then when people are looking or if they come up and ask you, yeah, it's, it's over in your my, seat. In my bag. In my I'll bag. put a nice uh, B-roll shot of it over top. 
then you can pass those out, I assume. If yes. like people are saying, hey, what is this for? Or even if they're looking maybe and you feel uncomfortable, you can walk up to them and be like, hey, check out the channel. And then you possibly have a new subscriber. It, it's really true. It makes it even better if they have that personal connection, if they've met them before. Random story, uh, my wife gets very embarrassed, but we drive motorbikes here in Vietnam. And at the red light, if I have my card on me, I turn to the person next to me and I say, hey, this is the most handsome foreigner in Vietnam. Of course, in Vietnamese. And I give them a business card. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure, you know, nine out of 10, just throw it away. Who cares, they're cheap. But that one person can become a subscriber. Networking, getting yourself out there, giving people a reason to ask you, hey, what are you doing with that camera? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I'm making a vlog for my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Feel free to check me out. Can have huge benefits in the long run. Great advice. So final question, what one thing would you tell people to keep in their mind when they are vlogging and walking around and maybe they start to feel uncomfortable or maybe they start to feel like they're acting unnatural as they're vlogging? What short advice can you give them that it's gonna be okay? If you're on YouTube, if you're a vlogger, if you're making content like this of any kind, keep in the back of your head that you are inspiring other people, mm. okay? Whether you have a small channel or a big channel, if somebody is watching, someone is probably taking inspiration from your content. And if I'm going to be an inspiration to someone, I want to be calm, cool, collected. I want mm. to give them something to look to. So I try to think of my audience. I try to think of your audience while I'm giving this. A lot of you probably don't know me and probably don't know much about Vietnam. That's okay. But maybe you watch a video of mine and you go, hey, that guy doesn't care that he acts like a fool in public. I can act normal and be comfortable with it. So hopefully in every vlog, you can be an inspiration and you have to think of who's watching this and who is looking up to you as, hey, I can do this, mm. okay? For example, if you guys are watching YouTube tutorials similar to his, you probably heard of Peter McKinnon. But then you have other big YouTubers that do similar content such as Peter Lindgren over in Sweden. I watch him as well and he always references Peter McKinnon. Daniel Schiffer, before he hit a million subscribers, he references Peter McKinnon, but now they work with him and it's like they looked up to him, he gave them inspiration and now what are they doing? They're giving inspiration to us mm. and we are growing to that level as well. So just remember who's watching and how you can inspire other people by how comfortable, cool, calm and collected and professional, it doesn't have to be professional, but how well you are making your vlogs. Well guys, thanks for watching today. I hope you learned something from the incredible creator and vlogger Fook Mop. If you have not checked out his channel and subscribed, make sure you do that. I will put a link above and in the description below. And we also just made a video of us eating live coconut worms. Completely appetizing, one of the most delicious things I've ever had. So make sure to check that out as well. And to Fook Mop, thank you man for coming on the channel. Appreciate you. We need to have more of these. Yeah, of course. And guys, just one last time, I know I said it over and over again, it's your channel, it's your content, make it how you want. For me, being out in public, being in a spot with a lot of people, it's just brought nothing but good things for me. Mm. Maybe in the future something bad will happen, <laughs> but as of right now, it's only been good things. Mm. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you took something from it, and I hope that you can kind of look up to another creator as inspiration and then become that inspiration for someone else. Great words, and with that, have a great week. As we say in Vietnam, hang up, fly. See you later.